how have you found censorship online and how, how do you find yourself having to construct narratives or like even like headlines and things like that in certain ways to avoid like artificial restrictions no i mean well, i've kind of given up on facebook um like we post on there out of obligation but you know facebook only want you to post things that you're prepared to spend money on but they won't let us spend money on it so kind of that's where we're at like from, from an seo perspective no like uh, obviously i put a lot of thought and effort and energy into like you know what a title is uh try not to be too clickbaity but you've also got to try and attract people's attention right um but like when it comes to seo and, and, and general headline writing you know just kind of try and try and get over the you know the point or the key point of the of the article mm. um and i know on instagram there's kind of especially within you know kind of the, the, like the american companies that have um you know kind of where, where there is a bit more of a commercial kind of you know like a social media team or whatever and there's a lot of talk about how you can get around instagram censorship and I, we just don't because what's the point right <laughs> i mean i get it i get why people would want to um but i'm kind of I don't want to put like an upside down exclamation mark in a word or like kind of, I just, I find it, I find it frustrating. And I think if we all kind of just carried on doing what we're doing and just talking naturally and normally, then actually eventually Instagram are going to just kind of catch up, you know, kind of en masse. If the mm -hmm. industry just agreed to just say it as it is, let's stop trying to hide it. Let's stop trying to cheat the algorithm. Let's stop trying to pretend we're not saying something, you know, like talking about MDMA, what MDMA, don't put MD full stop MA. Let's yeah. do it. Just, uh, let's all do it. Let's all just take a stand and say, look, guys, we are providing education information from a harm perspective. You know, we're trying to educate people and let them make informed choices. You know, we're all grown ups here. Um, you know, if everyone just did that and accepted it, then we'd maybe make, maybe get like kind of you know the likes of Instagram to change their their policies a little bit faster. Because at the minute, as far as Instagram's concerned, that you know if, if everyone starts masking and hiding the words and changing you know the, the way they spell something to to stop detection mm -hmm. not instagram aren't getting the point like you know hang on a minute there's a lot of people engaging with a lot of posts where the word cannabis is mentioned so actually maybe we do need to adjust our algorithm but at the minute they're not getting that data and not seeing those complaints that you know a, a post was yeah. edited or removed because it's not happening because people are playing this silly kind of cat and mouse game so no we don't it's kind of it's probably more my personal bugbear but i'm like no we're just we're going to say what's on this what's in this article what this post is about we're not going to try and hide it and um so far we've we've got away with it so <laughs> lush lush that's a, music to my ears i am obviously a stickler for language for fucking um definitions of words and kind of the way that they're interpreted both like in legalese colloquially and sort of in their uh, dictionary uh, definition so to hear the using those words i think my main bugbear is it, it draws a line artificially and it goes if you're in the group and you know what we're talking about you're cool and you move forward whereas anybody new kind of hits this wall they can't go oh how what do we say it on oh is it we or you i that we're doing on tiktok to get around weed you know that was that was yeah that was that was clever yeah so there's but the point is that if you didn't know to search that word for weed yeah. you wouldn't get into that space of weed or broccoli like they were trying to do on instagram for a while or whatever it was and so it keeps that knowledge esoteric and it then just, it creates a narrowing community that doesn't grow from new uh, interventions. Do you know what I mean? And that goes right against what we're trying to do, right? So, yeah. 100% and it reduces the seriousness of it. Again, it's, I'm incapable of being monetized. So I'm quite happy to say words like sexual assault, rape, suicide, murder, death. Do you know what I mean? These these words are supposed to be impactful and powerful. When you hear them, something in you goes, oh, it's supposed to. That's what the word is for. That's why we, we all went, that word, that word, cool. Because it means that thing and that thing isn't nice. Do, yeah. do you know what I mean? But if we then, oh, fluffy and, you know, oh, I unalived. Like... I'm sorry. No, the people then doing that so you can monetize your channel or whatever, I'm, I can't help but have at least a small amount of contempt for you because you're not truly being authentic and real to the space. So to hear you, you, you sort of champion that, I think is, um, is wonderful. I mean, Instagram has got a problem. My mate pointed out to me yesterday. Uh, there's some uh, bots farm has figured out breast farming, uh, breast farming, <laughs> uh, breastfeeding video farming. And so there's been bots just uploading women with fake children getting their breasts out 
and it's linked to like OnlyFans and porn sites and whatever else. And these accounts are just mass appearing and people are mass reporting them, but they're just mass appearing. And then obviously since the uh, the fucking genocide in, in the Middle East, the fucking, the number of dead children, all these ex- images of dead people, dead children, you know, people blown apart. They're really struggling with all these real depictions of things over this sort of way. And you think, yeah, why, why can't we use these, these fucking words? As you say, it's, I think they've, they'll know and there'll be a metric. And I think if we can tip it over that edge where they go, oh, it's starting to cost us ad, ad revenue now. That's, yeah. as soon, that's as soon as it becomes that, as you say, that they go, wait a minute, all these cannabis, but we can advertise to them. Because I mean, Meta is already kind of doing this. On my Facebook marketplace, I am constantly, I've, every other post is somebody selling weed or mushrooms with like sponsored links. Nice. I, I've seen a few people doing that on mushrooms. Um, yeah, gaming the system, like so, changing the ad afterwards. Yeah, but it's then, it's the, ex, the exploitation there of, it, we shouldn't have to do that. Do you know what I mean? With with any of these things, we should have those authentic spaces to be able to just go, oh, I would like to try ketamine. Google it. And it not just be propaganda or bullshit or, oh, this is academically acceptable or this is like, uh, f- do you know what I mean? It's 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 got to be meaningful information, actual harm reduction information and benefit maximization information. It's all well and good going, this might do this if it goes bad. We have to tell people what these things can do if they go good. There's a difference between saying what they actually will do on a statistical probability probability case, case by case basis, um, is a, a, a twinned with this because otherwise they're going to believe their mates. That, oh, I take this pill and I'll see unicorns or this or that, and so they go to media and go, well, "What's acid?" Think of your average TV media depiction of what an LSD experience is. Yeah, do you know what I mean? It's yeah, jumping out of um, the window. That was the one I remember from when, like, we were kids. Like, mm-hmm. if you take acid, you're going to jump out of the window because you think you can fly. Yeah, or like the walls start to melt physically and you can have obviously distortions and whatever else and synesthesia and various things at different levels with these substances, but it's it's not a real preparation for what they can do. So then so many people struggle with LSD and high dose mushrooms because they're told it's fluffy and la and la and this was my experience, but at heavy doses, these things can just fall onto you. That experience I was telling you about, I was filling caps, like hundreds of... Uh, uh, can of caps with can of oil. And I just, every time I got it in my hand, I'd like lick it off or take it. So I ended up having a block in a, an enzyme in my liver that when I took the acid, it fucking, I think it was 300 mics, completely blew my head off. A mandala physically like appeared in the room in front of me, closed my eyes, still fucking there. And it was just this like, I'm in trouble. And I'm a veteran of these drugs, but it was because it was so instant. My brain was like, I'm going crazy. And I had to talk myself into, all right, strap yourself in. This is going to be a long night. But with, if people don't have those stories and people talking about these experiences, how can they have that expectation to not then lead themselves into these so-called air quotes bad trips? Yeah. Well, I mean, like, you know, one of the websites that kind of I've always thought was amazing and about drug and Arrowhead, where they publish, you know, it's kind of very factual. You know, as a young man, that website was like a Bible to be like, you know, what, if I'm going to try this, this is what I can expect. And they did exactly that. You know, they have glowing experiences and they have the, the train wrecks, you know, so you read about a substance. And, and one of my favorite things to still do is go on and read like train wrecks from like Detour and, you know, kind of like, um, you know, kind of delirious like that, because, mm-hmm. you know, I would never consume one of those substances based on the fact of what I've read on heroin. And that is harm reduction in a nutshell, like tell people the truth and they can make a decision. I would never try to cheer because the idea of, of, of the yeah. trips I read on that, are, uh, on Arrowhead are just insane. They're, they're incredibly fascinating from a yeah. neutral, you know, kind of story reading and uh, interest in just in, in kind of altered states in general. But, you know, yeah, the, you know, as a young man reading about that, like that's off the list. Um, and that, you know, that, that's what you say. If you give people access to the information, uh, they will make sensible decisions for the most part. Um, same with, the book that's been published called The Drug User's Bible. I can't remember the name of the author, Dominic's. Oh, right. The guy who just took 1,500 substances yeah. documented it in, a, in quite a clinical, scientific way. Um, but the one drug out of all 1,500 he said he'd never do again and highly recommends nobody else to do is nutmeg. Mm. And uh, you and I tried to take it a long time ago. Yeah, on a Sunday morning around your brother's house. Yeah, it was very uh, young, um, young man, yeah. But it was like eating sawdust, and thankfully we didn't eat enough of it to, for it to be... No, I woke like, up, right? I woke up, um, because it took ages to kick out, I woke up and I was in a bit of a, in a bit of a state. I was like, wow, 
Um, two and yeah, eight. Again, I, 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 wouldn't, I mean, I wouldn't recommend eating sawdust. Eight, eight, eight teaspoons of sawdust either. No. 